what we've uh, reported today in The Lancet is uh, a new data set on the phase one trial of our vaccine, meaning just over a thousand people. And uh, firstly, the safety data looks very reassuring in, in all of those individuals, no serious adverse events, nothing of, uh, of significant concern. And then um, when we look at the immune responses, they are present in everybody. We see good neutralizing antibodies. These are the ones that we are looking for that should inhibit the infection of the virus into cells. And in addition, we see the other arm of the immune system, the cellular arm, usually called T cells, which are there in large numbers as well, even after a single dose of the vaccine. So really uh, results at the high end of our, um, of our expectations. So we are now moving forward. We vaccinated around about a uh, 10,000 people in uh, trials so far, and we are following those for efficacy to see if the vaccine really works. So now, right, so now you charge into phase three. You've got trials in the UK, Brazil, and South Africa that are underway. H can you say how much closer you are now to a final vaccine? Well, I should add that the largest trial should start soon, and that is actually in the US. Right. So we're hoping that will be underway in the next uh, two or three weeks. How close we are depends, of course, on the incidence of infection in the trial population. That's relatively low in the UK, but high in South Africa and high in Brazil. And we anticipate that in some of the states that we work in uh, in the US, the infection rates will be high as well. So it's very difficult to call. Uh, could be September, could be October. Nobody really knows, and uh, we're blinded to the data as it as it comes in. I'll be with you in a second. She is not doing well. A female COVID patient being transferred from her room to the intensive care unit at the Northeast Georgia Medical Center in Gainesville, Georgia, a state where COVID deaths have nearly doubled since earlier this month. It's exhausting. It's, it has pushed me to my limits. It has shown me that I'm a lot stronger than I thought I was. Christina Habin is an RN at this hospital, which is in a part of Georgia that was a hot zone early on in the COVID crisis. But numbers started dropping. The state started reopening, leading experts say to what's happening now. Just when you think that we might be getting ahead of this thing. It's going to come back and, and we're starting all over again. This used to be a corridor for regular hospital inpatients. It has now been transformed into an additional intensive care unit just for COVID patients. Dr. Stephen Morgan is treating many of them. Yeah, I have to admit, I thought we were probably in the clear. You know, I, I think a lot of us did. Dr. Morgan says the rising COVID numbers make the job more difficult, more fatiguing. He checks on a middle-aged COVID patient and is gratified by his progress. A real strong guy. Got started out on some uh, uh, remdesivir as soon as he came to the, to the hospital. But it's a very different feeling as registered nurse Habin walks into this room. This man is being treated in a specially designated COVID unit. This is not the ICU, but there is worry that he might end up going there. This patient has been here for two days. There's a lot of concern, obviously, for anybody in the COVID unit, but particularly for this man, because he's very old. There you go, darling. He has been given sugar water to keep his blood sugar up, as well as insulin. One of the hardest things is knowing that the last time that that patient's family saw them could possibly be the last time that they get to see them. This medical center is prepared for more and more patients being admitted. This unusual looking structure sits in a hospital parking lot. Patients will soon start getting moved inside. This rapidly constructed hospital addition consists of 44 shipping containers pieced together. There are 20 rooms for COVID patients. Everything that you would get in a traditional hospital room inside the hospital, we are capable of doing here in this unit. Everyone we talk with here expresses pride at what they are doing. But as the numbers go up, so does the concern, and in some cases, fear. Well, I guess you know what, post-traumatic stress, that's, that's how I feel. I mean, it's like, I feel like something that we should be able to prevent from happening. It's like we have no control over it in reality. And then the patients pass away. It's, it's almost like you, we get so close to them, it's like losing a family member. 
These doctors and nurses also consider each other family members, people they work with, fight this virus with, for as long as it takes. Gary Tuckman, CNN, Gainesville, Georgia.